This is a practice quiz for Unit 9, and this quiz is designed to give you practice with recalling the taxonomic names that you should know for the exam. So what I would like you to do is number a piece of paper from 1 to 17. I highly recommend writing down your answers because this will give you practice actually writing out the taxonomic names. Sometimes it might be easy to kind of imagine those words in your head, but you'll realize you can't write them down when you try to recall the information. So take the time now, write or number a piece of paper from 1 to 17, and then I will read each question. And after I read the question, you will have 20 seconds to answer uh, the question before I show you the answer. All right, so let's move on to question one. What kingdom am I? I am eukaryotic, multicellular, have cell walls, and am heterotrophic by absorption. The correct answer is fungi. Question number two. I am eukaryotic, multicellular, have cell walls, and am autotrophic. The correct answer is plantae. Number three, I am eukaryotic, multicellular, and am heterotrophic by ingestion. Correct answer is Animalia. Number four, I am eukaryotic, single celled, and have no cell walls. The correct answer is protista. Number five, I am prokaryotic, single-celled, and have cell walls. Correct answer is Monera. Now for the rest of the questions, you will be answering what phylum am I? Number six, I have vascular tissue, seeds, flowers, and fruits. Correct answer is Anthophyta. Number seven, I produce spores, but I don't have vascular tissue. Correct answer is bryophyta, the moss. Number eight, 
I produce spores and I have vascular tissue. Correct answer is pterophyta. These are the ferns. Number nine, I have vascular tissue, seeds, and cones. The correct answer is coniferophyta. Now you will be looking at pictures of animals and based on the picture, you want to write down the phylum of animal that the picture is representing. All right, so here is number 10. The correct answer is periphera. This is a picture of a sponge. Number 11. The correct answer is platyhelminthes. These are all pictures of flatworms. In the middle, we have what's called a planarian. In the top, we have what's called a marine flatworm. The bottom left, we have a picture of flukes. And on the right side, we have a picture of a tapeworm. Number 12. The correct answer is cnidaria. Here we have representatives of the phylum cnidaria. The top left we have a jellyfish. We have on the bottom left an anemone. And on the right side we have some pictures of coral. So coral, anemones, and jellyfish are examples of cnidaria. Number 13. The correct answer is Annelida. Remember that Annelida is referring to the segmented worms. So here we have a picture of an earthworm and a leech. Notice the high level of segmentation in these worms. Number 14. The correct answer is mollusca. Remember, examples of mollusks include things like clams, snails, slugs, or octopuses. And remember that not all mollusks have a shell. However, they all have a special tissue called a mantle. Number 15.
The correct answer is arthropoda. Remember, poda means feet, and arthropods have many feet or many appendages. And examples of these things include things like spiders, insects, crabs, or scorpions. And they are unique in that they have an exoskeleton surrounding their body, as well as many jointed appendages. Number 16. The correct answer is echinodermata. Remember, echino means spiny, dermata means skin. One characteristic of this group is that they have spiny skin. They also have what is called five-fold symmetry. Can you name all of the organisms in this uh, slide? So examples of echinoderms include sea cucumbers, starfish, sand dollars, and sea urchins. The picture of the sea urchin is in the bottom right. Number 17. The correct answer is chordata. Number 18 is a bonus question. It says the following flowchart includes the four phyla plants. What biologically significant character would be appropriate in position A and in position B? I will start the timer now. All right, let's go over the answers. So in position A, you're trying to think of a characteristic that separates the bryophytes and pterophytes from the anthophytes and the coniferophytes. There are two potential answers you could have put here. One thing you could have written down is that they have spores. So the bryophyte and pterophyta have spores, whereas the anthophyte and coniferophyta do not have spores. Or you could have written down that bryophyte and pterophyta do not produce seeds because the anthophyta and coniferophyta produce seeds. So either of those options could be correct. In position B, you want to separate out the coniferophyta from the anthophyta. So what would be correct in location B would either be uh, that coniferophyta produce cones. You could have also put down that coniferophyta do not produce fruits, or you could have written down that coniferophyta do not produce flowers. All right, so that is the end of the practice quiz for unit nine.